nothing like me. You can't walk past a mirror without checking yourself out a little bit. This world is in no shortage of people who are fascinated with making muscles and making them a little bit bigger. So in this episode of 5 Minute Physiology, I'm going to take you behind the scenes and show you what exactly it looks like from the perspective of the muscle cell when you hypertrophy. So let's jump in and take a look at it. Well, we first have to understand that all of your muscles are comprised of thousands if not millions of small individual little muscle fibers. You don't have to know all the terminology on the screen there. But to get the basic sense, this is what it would look like. Right? So what you're seeing here is, is a muscle sample that I took from a professional athlete. This actually happens to be a world champion. Uh, in the picture on, on the right hand side, you can see them kind of lining it up, but then I've zoomed it in there. That's what actual muscle tissue looks like. So if I take it directly out of you, put it on a petri dish and kind of line it up vertically, each one of those little lines or bundles is what we call it, and it has several hundred individual muscle cells within it. So if we go back to our original picture, we can see that, imagine this image I'm showing you is your bi one of your bicep muscles. Uh, the, the entire muscle itself is made up of all these individual muscle cells. Well, in order for that bicep to then get bigger, one of two things has to happen. Number one, you could increase the diameter or the size of any of those individual cells. That's what we call muscle hypertrophy. Okay, so that was, again, an increase in diameter of any individual muscle cell. The only other thing that could make the bicep as a whole bigger would be hyperplasia. Now, we'll talk about this in a separate video. I have some very controversial views on that, but that would be the addition of individual muscle fibers themselves. Okay, so most people are gonna tell you hyperplasia doesn't happen, and it probably doesn't under normal circumstances that much. Again, maybe if you're nice to me, uh, I'll make a separate video, video explaining to you my views on hyperplasia, but for now, let's disregard it, okay? So, for the most part, making your bicep bigger means that you have made all of those, or most of those individual muscle cells themselves a little bit thicker. So this is an actual image of what it would look like. So on the top there, the running horizontally, is a three-dimensional image, that, well, it was a three-dimensional image that I made into a two-dimensional image of an individual muscle fiber. So we use some pretty fancy technology and some microscopes. And what you're seeing there in the red uh, are those, these contractile fibers, uh, myosin and actin, which we'll talk about in a second, and the blue are the nuclei. All right, but the point is that's one individual muscle cell. In fact, if you've had uh, anatomy or physiology, you can see those vertical lines running up and down. And those aren't bad uh, quality pictures. Those are the actual sarcomeres. So those are the Z lines. That makes sense to you. Uh, but what would happen if you were to go through muscle hypertrophy uh, is that individual fiber would then, again, increase its diameter, and that's what it would look like. So you can see, again, the nuclei really clear there. Uh, Dr. Jimmy Bagley, my colleague, has uh, a, a tremendous amount of these photos. This is what he does. So check him out on social media and everything else if you would like to see videos of muscle like this. What actually gets bigger? Okay, we know the fiber gets larger, but why does the fiber itself get larger? Well, we have to take a quick look at the microanatomy of a muscle cell. So when you hugeify a muscle fiber, or muscle cell, these are interchangeable terms, here's what basically has to happen. Imagine the green circle there is one of those individual muscle fibers, and I've, instead of running it long ways like this, I've just stacked it and we've looked straight down at it, right? So we're looking at the circle. Well, of, for muscle to contract, we have two primary uh, filaments that we're interested in. One of them is called actin, the other is called myosin. Now, for every individual myosin, there are six actin that surround it. And effectively, what happens when muscles contract is the myosin reach up, grab the actin, pull them together. That shortens the length of the muscle. Those microfilaments or myofilaments stack on top of each other, and the muscle gets larger. All right, you can Google sliding filament theory if you've never heard of this and learn more. But for the purposes of this video, that's what you're going to look like. So again, we're still talking one individual muscle cell. Well, what happens when you hypertrophy is this. So what those little pinkish fuchsia something colory things myosin actually look like is they've got a big globular head on one end and they kind of are in, intertwined back and forth. And we like to teach this in basic anatomy, but that's not really what it actually looks like. It probably more realistically looks like that. And so those little purple heads, again, will go up, grab an actin, they'll kind of cock over, pull the actin towards it, and you get our contraction. And those are actually running three-dimensional space, so they're all, all parts of the myosin filament. And so, again, we have those, if I'm looking directly at you, there's the actin, 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 or whatever six was. And then we have these little myosin heads 
that are kind of wrapped all around, and they can reach up and grab these actin at any point in space. Well, when you've committed to muscle hypertrophy, what the body does is that. And so it doesn't add more total myosin. It takes the current amount of myosin you have, typically, and increases the amount of protein. And so the term we would say here is we increase myosin protein. We didn't increase the total number of myosin filaments. You can add myosin filaments, but you have to add equal proportions of actin. Because if you just started adding myosin, instead of having six actin around every myosin, you now have two myosin around every three actin, or there'd be one to one. And, and it wouldn't be a good ratio, and that throws off our uh, contractile function of our muscle. Now, other animals do have different combinations. Six to one is pretty unique to human. But that's really what happens. So for the most part, we're adding myosin protein. And that's the point, the major take home I wanted to get across. And this video is the filament number typically stays the same. But we get it there. So to give you that visual again, this is what it would look like. You're taking those individual ones, and I'm just representing the fact that there are six uh, myosin here if you want. And oh, look at that. The diameter of the myosin filaments themselves gets thicker because we added more myosin protein. The same thing happens to actin probably, by the way. We don't know fully exactly this process, so maybe I'll come back in a year or 10 or 5 years and say, ah, oh, this part's wrong, this part was right. It's not exactly perfectly known, but this is as best as we understand it now. So anyways, back to the video. Because the myosin filament got thicker, because we added more myosin protein, it kind of got started smashed up next to each other, and it's getting smashed up too close. It's called the lattice spacing. So the space between the actin and the myosin gets too close, and I can't really contract fully. And so what you have to do is take the entire cell and start adding more links to the cell wall so that the entire diameter of the cell can get larger so that the spacing between the myosin and actin can be proper. And so the first step again is you would add more of these myosin, these actin, these start getting bunched up, and now watch what happens here. And now as a result of that, you have to increase the diameter of the muscle cell. And so then the muscle cells start getting smashed up next to each other. And so because of that, you start increasing the space of the actual muscle itself. Right? So that's, that's actually a hypertrophy of an individual muscle fiber. That's why your muscles get larger uh, when you go through size. So coming back to our original uh, image here, uh, an increase in diameter of a muscle fiber is typically what we refer to when we say muscle hypertrophy. And now you have a little bit better understanding of what causes that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Always check back for more. I am considering making a 25 or 55 minute video uh, of the muscle hypertrophy. So let me know in a comment below if uh, you'd like this and you'd like me to make that 55 one. As always, I do all these things for free. And actually I just realized I have a Patreon account but I have been forgetting to charge people for the videos, so I uploaded a whole bunch of things to Patreon and, and didn't even charge contributors. So, point being, uh, I, I really make these videos to entertain and inspire and engage folks that don't have the opportunity to go to school or, or, or take my class. So, if you're enjoying, uh, I would appreciate some support. Just help share it around, get people to subscribe. Other than that, have a, just a rock solid day and, and uh, one love, one nation.